Hi there strikers. There's something uniquely disturbing about people vanishing into thin air. Read about these incredibly strange, unsolved cases although these disappearances span centuries, locations, age ranges, and circumstances, there's one common thread shared between them, a lack of closure. There are theories, speculations, and investigations, but never a decisive answer. On our incoming, episode I'm going to feature some of the cases of mysterious disappearances of some missing that just disappear without any trace. Hi there strikers, on today feature stories, cases of still unsolved disappearances so let us start. National parks, are known for their natural beauty, encompassing more than 80 million acres across the United States. They're a popular destination for hikers and travelers. With more than 84 million visitors in 2017 alone, unfortunately some of those visitors never return home. Here's a look at five people who went missing in national parks. Number 1. Chiang McClellan 27-year-old Sin McClellan missing in Grand Teton National Park on June 8, 2021. He hasn't been seen or heard from since. Originally from Dublin, Ireland, Chuan held dual citizenship and was living and working as a snowboard instructor in Jackson, Wyoming at the time of his disappearance. Described by friends and family as easygoing and friendly, Chuan loved the outdoors and was a trained musician. On the morning of his disappearance, he texted friends, attempted to facet time with his mother in Ireland, and appeared to be in good spirits. Chuan McClellan was last seen in Grand Teton National Park on June 8, 2021. Potential sightings of Chuan on that day were on the trail system that leads towards Garnet Canyon, Surprise and Amphitheater Lakes, and Delta Lake. Chuan failed to turn up for work on June 10th, where he worked as a snowboard instructor in Jackson Hole, and was reported missing late in the evening of June 12th. Security footage shows Chuan entering Grand Teton National Park through the Moose Entrance Station on June 8th at 15 p.m. The Teton Intelligence Dispatch Center was notified of his disappearance at 7 o'clock am on the morning of June 13th. His vehicle was found later that morning, parked at the Loop in Meadows Trailhead located within Grand Teton National Park. Authorities traced his phone and found his last cell phone ping was on Teton Park Road near Cottonwood Creek around 3.30 p.m. on June 8th. Searches of the Garnet Canyon area were conducted with the aid of helicopters and search and rescue dog teams but no clues as to Cyan's whereabouts were found. In September 2021, computer forensics revealed Chuan had searched for Delta Lake several times just prior to his disappearance. A local woman came forward on June 14, 2021, stating that she saw Chuan around 2.30 p.m. on June 8, hiking about a half mile from the trailhead. The individual reported McClellan was headed south towards Taggart Lake and had a conversation with McClellan where he described where he worked, that he's from Ireland and currently living in Jackson, according to a statement from National Park Service officials. Additional searches near Taggart Lake and Bradley Lake were conducted after the woman came forward, but no new clues or evidence as to Cyan's whereabouts were located. The woman was later charged for knowingly providing false information, banned from the park for five years, and ordered to pay $17,600 in restitution. Over 500 hours were spent conducting searches near Taggart Lake based on the false information she provided. The location of Chair McLaurin and the circumstances regarding his disappearance remains unknown. The National Park Service says no new information has been found regarding his disappearance and continues to appeal for the public's assistance in the case. His case remains unsolved. Number 2. Jacob Olivier 23-year-old Jacob Olivia was last seen entering the Everglades National Park on August 24, 2011. His car was found abandoned three days later, parked at the Pine Glades Lake Trailhead in Homestead, Florida. He hasn't been seen or heard from since. On August 27, 2011, Jacob's abandoned vehicle was found by Everglades National Park Rangers. The vehicle, a green 1998 Isuzu Ombre pickup truck with Texas license, Plate number at G3707 appeared to have been parked there for a few days and was located in a parking lot by Pine Glades Lake in Homestead, Florida. A receipt inside the vehicle showed that Jacob entered the park on August 24th and surveillance video showed him entering alone at 1 o'clock p.m. that afternoon. Rangers also found an empty pistol case and a box of bullets with several missing inside the truck. The last thing from his cell phone was at 4.45 p.m. Jacob lived in the city of Spring 
Texas at the time of his disappearance, and worked as a mechanic in a shop in Conroe. He didn't have any known friends or relatives in Florida. His family was unaware that he was in Florida until they were notified by park rangers on August 30th that his truck had been found abandoned. A search of the area was conducted by park rangers and police officers using canines and helicopters. The search was called off in September after a week without any evidence as to his whereabouts being found. The canines used in the search only found Jacob's scent near the abandoned truck, leading investigators to believe he may have left the park in another vehicle or on foot. His family says it's uncharacteristic of Jacob to go without contacting them for this long. According to his family, he had recently completed a drug rehabilitation program and seemed to be doing well. There was no evidence of drugs found inside his vehicle. Number 3. Laura Bradbury Three-year-old Laura Bradbury was last seen in California's Joshua Tree National Park on October 18, 1984. Laura Bradbury was born in 1981 to parents Patty and Michael. Her parents married in 1969 and moved from Alaska to Orange County, California in the late 70s. Laura had two siblings, Travis and Emily, and in 1984, the family of five was living in a two-bedroom condominium in Huntington Beach. Joshua Tree, on October 18, 1984, three and a half-year-old Laura Bradbury was on a camping trip with her family in the Joshua Tree National Park. They were staying at the Indian Cove campground and were regular visitors to the park. Laura accompanied her eight-year-old brother Travis to the portable restrooms near the campground. She waited outside while he used the restroom. When he came back out, she was gone. Authorities suspected Laura had been abducted. Over 250 people, including horses and helicopters, searched for Laura in the park. A bloodhound followed what appeared to be Laura's footprints for about two miles before losing the scent. Witnesses claim to have seen a man in his 50s in a blue van at the campground before Laura disappeared. A similar van was spotted near Burns Canyon a few hours after her disappearance. The search for Laura made national headlines, and she was one of the first children to be featured on milk cartons. The official search was called off after three days. Within weeks of Laura's disappearance, Mike and Patty created the Laura Center in Orange County a non-profit organization that mailed flyers and held regular news conferences. Within weeks of Laura's disappearance, Mike and Patty created the Laura Center in Orange County, a non-profit organization that mailed flyers and held regular news conferences. In 1990, new DNA tests were used and identified the skull as belonging to Laura Bradbury with 99% accuracy. The San Bernardino County Coroner's Office has not issued a death certificate. Laura's cause of death remains unknown. Her father has been trying to get the skull transferred to a mortuary since 2009, but because they haven't issued a death certificate, he has been unable to claim her remains. No arrests have been made in connection to Laura's disappearance, and her case remains unsolved. In 1990, the family sold their condo in Huntington Beach and moved with their two children to a home in Cross Valley. Laura's mother Patty died on September 5, 2001. Her father, Michael, wrote a book about her disappearance called Laura and Bradbury, A Father's Search, in 2010. Number 4. Randy Morganson 54-year-old Randy Morganson was last seen in Fresno, California on July 21, 1996. The backcountry ranger disappeared while on a four-day routine patrol in the Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Parks. At the time of his disappearance, Morganson had served with the National Park Service for 27 years. He was a seasonal backcountry ranger at Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Parks and was considered the most senior ranger in the High Sierra, California. Around the start of the 1996 season, Morganson received divorce papers from his wife of 20 years, Judy. He recently had an affair with a fellow ranger, and this was the consequence. On July 21, 1996, Morganson walked away from his remote outpost station, two miles east of Bench Lake, leaving for a routine patrol. He left a note saying he would be away for three or four days. Morganson never returned and has not been heard from again. On July 24, 1996, he was reported missing by fellow rangers when he failed to check in with dispatch at the regular time following the first day of the patrol. Nearly 100 rescue personnel conducted an extensive search for Morganson in an 80 square mile radius of Bench Lake Basin with helicopters scanning from above and trained dogs sniffing the ground. After seven days of searching, no signs of Morganson were found. On the day of his disappearance, two hikers witnessed Morganson on the John Moo Trail. 
He was reportedly in good spirits and even encouraged them to continue their trek over the next daunting pass. Some speculated Morganson left the park to start a new life, but bank records showed no withdrawals and his credit cards were unused. Morganson had recently separated from his wife in Arizona, and the trauma in his life may have had an effect on his state of mind. Morganson's car was also found where he had parked it. His service revolver, a 357 Magnum, was found locked in a drawer in his cabin. In July 2001, skeletal remains were discovered in a remote trailer's area along a creek northeast of Window Peak drainage within Kings Canyon National Park. Dental records positively identified the remains to be that of Randy Morganson. Rangers also discovered a tattered shirt with Morganson's badge and name tag, a backpack, and a boot with a leg bone protruding from it. A functioning park issued radio was discovered resting on top of the falls the investigation indicated that he likely fell through a snowdrift and broke his leg while crossing a creek dying of associated injuries and hypothermia his remains were then washed down the creek into a small cascade where they were hidden in the rocks for years and number five amy bechtel 24 year old amy bechtel was last seen in lander wyoming on july 24th 1997 she disappeared while jogging in the Wind River Mountains of the Shoshone National Forest, approximately 15 miles south of Lander. Amy Roe Bechtel was born on August 4, 1972 in Santa Barbara, California, to parents Duane and Joan Roe. Amy is the youngest of her siblings, and the family moved to Jackson, Wyoming, where she grew up. On the morning of July 24, 1997, Amy left home around 9.30 am and told her husband Steve she would be running several errands in town after finishing her shift at Wind River Fitness Center. Around 2.30 pm, Amy stopped in at Camera Connection in downtown Landa, a local photo shop. She asked the shop's owner about several photographs she planned to submit to the Sinks Canyon photo contest. She seemed as if she was in a hurry, repeatedly looking at her watch during their conversation. Around 4.30 pm, Steve returned home to find their house empty after having spent the afternoon with a friend. Amy never made it back home and has never been heard from again. Steve reported his wife missing to the Fremont County Sheriff's Office at 10.30 p.m. that evening. On the morning of July 25, 1997, Amy Bechtel's white Toyota Tercer wagon was found abandoned on the burnt Gulch Road turnoff up in the Wind River Mountains near Shoshone National Park. The car was unlocked and the keys were found under her to-do list sitting next to her sunglasses on the seat of the vehicle. But her Green Eagle Creek wallet was missing. Authorities believe that Bechtel drove to the Shoshone National Forest after leaving the photo shop to prepare for an upcoming 10 kilometers hill climb sponsored by the fitness club and scheduled for September 7th. Dale Wayne Eaton had also been named a suspect in Amy's disappearance. He was convicted of the kidnapping, rape and murder of Lisa Marie Kimmel in the Little Miss case. On August 1, 1997, Steve cut short an interview with the FBI after an agent claiming to have evidence proving the murder accused him of killing his wife. He refused to submit to a polygraph test, but authorities stated that he was not a central suspect in the case. He too refused to discuss the case and has not been charged in connection to her disappearance. His death sentence was being overturned by a district judge and he has been serving a life sentence in prison since November 2014. Police found no evidence, means or motive for foul play in Amy Robechtel's disappearance. The circumstances of Amy Robechtel's disappearance remain unclear, and her case is currently classified as endangered and missing. Her case remains unsolved. She has never been located, and was declared dead in absentia by her husband in 2004. Steve Bechtel has since remarried with the children and still lives in Lander. The circumstances of Amy Robechtel's disappearance remain unclear and her case is currently classified as endangered and missing. Her case remains unsolved.